Hi everyone, I hope that you're all doing well. So today, as you can hear, I've decided to vlog in English and I feel a bit awkward doing this, but at the same time, it's something that I've wanted to do for such a long time. For now, this is like a test basically, where I want to see if you guys like my English videos. I know that I have a English channel on YouTube. However, I find it really difficult to actually find the time to upload a video on top of what I'm doing on this channel, which is supposed to be my French channel. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I just try to vlog in English and add subtitles so that if whoever's watching uh, doesn't understand English, then at least they have the subtitles in French so that they can still, you know, keep up with my videos and my vlogs and everything. So again, this is a test. If you guys like it, then I would be very, very happy to do other videos in English. For those of you who don't know me, I am French. I lived in London for six years, from 2009 till 2015. I miss London very much. I miss um, speaking in English very much as well. And also in my day-to-day -day life, in my everyday life, I am surrounded by English in the sense that even on social media, I mainly follow English speaking influences, not necessarily English people, but I'm always drawn to content that's in English, whether it be on Instagram or on YouTube. And I miss speaking English so much. My son speaks English, however, he's at this age now where he just doesn't want to speak anything else but French. He feels a bit awkward and different uh, when he speaks in English and he's nine years old. So obviously at that age, you just want to be like everybody else. You don't want to be different. Honestly, I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. And actually way back when I first started YouTube, I used to do uh, videos in English. But then I thought, mm, you know what, I live in France, why don't I make, you know, French videos and everything. But I've always been drawn to English. I don't know, I've always felt it inside of me and my gut feeling has always been to make videos in English. So I'm trying this, which is what I did when I started vlogging. Uh, at the beginning it was a test and then you guys really liked it. And so I kept on with vlogging. So now I thought, why not give this a try as well and vlog in English and see what you guys think. Because I know that for those of you who watched my couple of English videos on my English channel, you really liked it. But at the time I didn't know that you could add um, subtitles on YouTube. So now this is something that I'm going to try. Um, and for the subtitles, you have to go onto the setting of this video or of whatever video that you're watching on YouTube and you have to click on the language of the subtitles that you want and normally you should be able to have these subtitles. So yeah, and on top of that, I've studied um, translation and more specifically, I've studied audiovisual translation, which is about subtitling, you know, um, dubbing, um, audio description and all that stuff. So it's in me, it's in me and I really want to do it. And you know, with growing older, I've realized that you always have to listen to your gut feeling and if something is pulling at you, then that means that you have to do it and you have to try it. So that's what I'm doing today. So yesterday we came back from Paris, as you probably have seen. So it's the morning after, I am getting ready now. I've washed my hair, I've had my shower, I put a new layer of fake tan. I ordered this fake tan, which is not really a fake tan, it's a lotion, it's a gradual tan, which I really, really like. And at first I wanted to order this one on Amazon, but because I saw that it would uh, take too long for it to arrive before I leave for Paris, then I thought I would get this one. But then I didn't realize that I actually did order this one as well. So it arrived while I was away. So I thought, okay, let's give this a try this morning, which I did. And it's really nice. I've just applied it. So I can't see the end result yet. However, even when you apply it, it's already dark. So you can tell what color you're going to end up with. So this is from Vita Liberata Luxury Tan and I got it in um, uh, dark. And now I'm going to do my makeup. This is everything that I took with me to Paris. So I'm just going to get ready quickly. I'm going to dry my hair and then I catch up with you later. There you go, I am now ready. And that's my hair and makeup done. I still need to get dressed. However, I thought I would show you again uh, what I use to do my hair. So I first blow dry it with the GHD Elios uh, hair dryer, which is this one. And then I curl my hair with this curling iron. Now this curling iron is a very ordinary, let's say, curling iron. I got it from my colleague uh, who sold it to me for like five or 10 euros, I think. 
And if I remember well, she got it from a, you know, a typical a normal supermarket. So I think it's Remington or Babyliss, I'm not sure. No, it's Remington. So it's Remington. And yeah, it's really thick. A lot of people ask me about the size of it, but I'm not really sure. I would have to, I guess, measure it. But this is the size of it. It's quite thick, it's quite big. So yeah, and that's what allows me to, you know, have more waves rather than proper curls. And that's what I like at the moment. But sometimes I also use things that are, you know, on the thin side so that I can have, you know, tighter curls. But right now I'm really into this kind of hairstyle. And uh, now what I need to do is that I need to get dressed and then I need to tidy up the house a bit because it's in quite a state. Um, so as you know, yesterday we came back from Paris. My suitcase was just all over the place in the living room yesterday. So I need to empty my suitcase, wash some clothes, do the laundry and yeah, just get on with my day really. So I'm going to get dressed and then tidy up the house. Actually, before I go and clean up the house, organize everything and all that, I really wanted to talk to you about this brush. I've had this brush for such a long time, but I had stopped using it for a while. I don't know why I stopped, but then I was struggling with my hair, especially my hair being wet. When I had to detangle my hair, I would suffer quite a lot and it was just painful. And then I remembered that I had this brush so I used it not expecting much of it and then I remembered how amazing this brush is. I got it from Sephora, it's the Tangle Teaser brush and it's amazing. You can either use it under the shower, you know, if you have like a, a hair mask and you want to make sure that it goes, you know, all over your hair and also of course to detangle your hair. I just love it and I, I just forgot how amazing it was and I even use it now on dry hair after I've done my curls and everything just to make sure that my curls are softer. I just love this brush and yeah, I just don't want to stop using it ever again. It detangles your hair but it's not painful at all. I don't know how to explain it but yeah, I'll put a link under the video if you want to check it out. But I know that I got it from um, Sephora and they have like the different sizes as well. I think I have a bit of wax on it because it's quite dirty and I've, and I've done my waxing recently and it must have got a bit of wax on the brush. But anyway, it's really good. I like this one because it has a, like this cover here so that it protects it from getting all the dust and everything and getting too dirty. But um, yeah, it's amazing. So now the house is more or less clean. To be fair, it wasn't that bad because before we left, I made sure that everything was kind of clean and organized so that when we come back, you get that nice feeling of coming back to a clean house. Two things I wanted to share with you. First of all, my outfit. I thought I would show you what I'm wearing today. So I'm wearing this uh, blouse from Mango. However, what I do with this one, uh, now that it's quite cold, is that I make sure to wear something underneath because otherwise I just cannot just wear a shirt or a blouse this thin and in winter or in autumn winter i always need to wear a thick jumper or you know something with wool or something quite thick that will keep me warm because i'm always freezing otherwise so yeah so i'm wearing this top this high neck top from uh, promod then i'm wearing this belt from reiko it's quite old actually but i really like this belt because it's quite wide and quite thick and then i'm wearing these trousers from uh, cezanne i got them back in september i'm sure they're still available so if i find them I I will put the link uh, down below in the description box and also I'm wearing these uh, shoes from Zara. These are very very old actually but I really like them. They're in leather so they're still in quite good condition. The other thing that I wanted to share with you so that you guys do not buy this um, is this like window cleaner. It's really really bad. I don't know if you can tell but my mirror is full of little marks everywhere i don't know if you can see but it's really bad and i've never had a window cleaner that's made my mirrors even more dirty than they are before i cleaned them so yeah i just wanted to share this with you i got this from lidl and it's not good i used to buy um another one from lidl which was blue you know the liquid was blue this one is 
I mean, to see through. But yeah, I don't know if they've changed the formula or whatever, but it's really not good. So yeah, I just thought I'd let you know, because uh, now every time I clean my mirrors, it just gets me frustrated. And, I've, and this is quite new, so I still have to go through all of the product before. I mean, I usually I don't like to waste things, so I like to finish things even though I don't like them. Um, but I don't know if I'll have the patience to go through this entire bottle before I buy a new one. But anyway, now all I need to do is uh, put on the vacuum cleaner and I also need to water my plant. Actually, I have a feeling that it's dying. I hope not. So I'm going to water it and then, uh, yeah, we'll see. And I think that today we also have to go um, grocery shopping because we haven't been at the beginning of the week because we were away. So, so I think now we're due for a grocery shopping because we have almost nothing in the fridge. Before we go, I'm actually really hungry. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make myself some bread with butter. When we went to Paris, we went to this new bakery called uh, Coupa, which means friend in um, in French. And it's owned by Michalak, who's a big Patissier, let's say, um, in uh, in France and especially in Paris. And I'm gluten free, so I avoid gluten as much as possible. I'll say that I'm gluten intolerant. I don't have any specific diseases or anything, but it's just that when I eat gluten, like proper bread or pasta, I would have, you know, a tummy ache. I wouldn't feel so good. I would have a headache. I would feel quite lethargic and everything. But what's particular about this bread um, and about the bakery itself is that they give gluten free option or things that aren't made with wheat flour. They can't officially say that it's gluten-free because even though they don't make uh, some of the pastries or some of the breads with uh, wheat flour, because they also make other things with wheat flour, they can't say, you know, they can't stamp the gluten-free logo, let's say. This bread, for example, is made with wheat flour. However, it's made with another thing. I'm not sure what English word is, but it's made with levain. And this levain, which is a mixture of flour, water and yeast makes the gluten less active, which means that people who are intolerant to gluten can still eat this type of bread, although not in big quantities, but they can still eat it. And it's true because I've had it uh, yesterday and I was fine. And this morning I had two slices for breakfast and I'm feeling fine as well. So I'm going to have just a piece now, just because we need to go grocery shopping, but I'm actually starving. And I know that it's not a good thing to go grocery shopping when you're hungry. So I'm going to have a bit of that with butter and Isaac my husband got this focaccia well, there's only a little bit left now but oh my god it is so nice I've never eaten such an amazing focaccia that is so moist that is full of olive oil that is just so like it feels like a cloud even when you eat it so it's really amazing so if you are you know if, if you're going to Paris or if you live in Paris make sure to try the new bakery because it's really good and I also have a cookie that I haven't eaten yet, uh, which is gluten-free. I mean, it's really made with no wheat flour whatsoever, but I'll have it for dessert later. I'm keeping it, I'm saving it for dessert. So I'm gonna make myself just a piece of bread with butter and then we're gonna go grocery shopping. at the organic shop and I just wanted to show you where I get my gluten-free um, oat uh, milk so this is the one right here but I've recently discovered that they do make um, oat milk without gluten I've really noticed a difference since I've stopped drinking regular oat milk this milk is really good if you want to foam if you want to make sure that you have a lot of foam in your milk for your coffee or anything this one is really good. We are now home and I am gonna make myself a nice cup of coffee. And because I was telling you about the oat milk, the gluten-free oat milk, I thought I would show you how I make my coffee, just in case, you know, someone is wondering. So this is the coffee machine that we use. It's this one, it's the Delonghi uh, Dynamica. And oh my God, this coffee machine. I mean, it's just a game changer. It has completely changed the way we enjoy coffee, the way we drink coffee, the way we make coffee, everything is just, amazing we got it on black friday and we're really happy that we did we had a really good deal on it what i use it for is to make my milk and also obviously to have coffee but i also use it for hot water to have my tea or my infusion rather because i don't really drink tea because of my um, anemia or rather iron deficiency so i avoid um, anything that has tea in it 
Um, however, now I'm going to make myself a coffee. The reason why we always have this glass here is because when we switch it on and switch it off, it always does this little uh, cleaning process where there's water that comes out of the coffee machine. So you always have to make sure that you have something here. I mean, you could have nothing here and just have the water, you know, drain through here because I think that's what it's made for, especially with the two holes. However, we'd rather, you know, avoid to have, you know, sort of too much water in here. So we always make sure we have this here. So now I'm gonna make my milk first and then I will make the coffee. So I'm gonna show you how I make it. For my coffee, I'd rather drink um, oat milk. However, for my tea, I like to have, you know, a milk that's rather more flavored. Currently I'm drinking the vanilla flavored one from Alpro and it's really good, but that's more for um, infusions. For coffees, I like to have more of a plain uh, milk. So like so, and then, I have to uh, press this button here. So this will warm up the steam and then once it's ready, I will just make sure that I put the steam inside my milk and it will double in volume or even triple sometimes if I'm lucky. There's like this whole technique of, you know, to make the foam, but I'm really not a pro. We've had this coffee machine for like a month. So I'm still learning, but it's amazing. And there you go, so this is all the foam that I have, all the mousse. And then, woo, oh my god, oh my god, that was really close. So now I'm gonna make my coffee. The, the way I like to do it is quite light in the sense that I don't want it to be too strong. So here you can really choose how strong you want your coffee. So Isaac, for example, he would have it all the way up to the five um, coffee beans. However, I do it with just one coffee bean and that's enough for me. And then I would do it quite short. So I have mainly um, milk in my cup and then I would have a touch of coffee. Uh, Isaac usually does either this one, quite short, so quite like a ristretto, or this one, um, espresso, and then sometimes he doubles it. For this afternoon, I think I'm going to make it, because sometimes I double it as well, but this time I'm not going to double it. I'm going to keep it as just a single one. So I do one bean, and then this one. And my coffee is served. This is how I like my coffee. And what I really like as well about this machine and what I've noticed is that because it has a filter here in the water tank, it never gets, uh, I forgot the word. I can't remember how you call it in English, but you know when you have um, like water that stays and then it becomes all white, it's a bit like in the kettle when you make tea and after at some point, the inside of the kettle becomes all white. What I've noticed is that with the filter, it doesn't happen uh, in this tank, so that's great. The only thing that you have to do every time you make milk is that you have to wash this part. So that's the only thing, but it takes only a few seconds. And now it's time for cooking. So this is the second cookie that I got um, yesterday from Paris, from the Copain Bakery. So this one is also gluten-free because it has no um, wheat flour. And this one is the more plain or classic one. The one that I had yesterday was full of nuts and it was just amazing. And when I say nuts, I mean hazelnuts. It was full of like hazelnuts and like this hazelnut paste and it was just amazing. So now I'm gonna try this one with my coffee. I'm gonna answer a few emails that I have pending and then I will catch up with you later. In fact, no, let's try the cookie together. All right. So before I sit, ooh, I think there's chocolate inside. Oh my God, look at this. Yum. Mmm. And what I like about this cookie is that it's really soft. I'm a big fan of anything cookie dough, anything soft and not too crunchy, not too hard. I love biscuits and or rather cookies that are half cooked and not cooked all the way through. Mmm. This is so nice. So I'm going to have that with my coffee, answer some emails and then I'll get back to you. If there's one thing that I have noticed recently on myself that I particularly see on my videos and on my vlogs is how puffy my face is in the morning. It's something that I never had before and I've been getting that for the past, I don't know, I would say maybe a month or a couple of weeks, I'm not really sure. But it's just, I don't know why, I never had this before. I've never, I haven't changed my eating routine in fact i'm eating even better than before i don't know i'm not sure but in the mornings i just wake up with such a puffy face 
I don't even eat salty. I eat just like I have a, like a regular, normal, healthy diet. So it's just so strange. I don't know if that's something that comes with age, if it's hormones, I'm not sure, but it's just so weird because I'm currently watching the vlog, the Paris vlog that I'm gonna put online now. I've noticed that every time I film at the beginning of the day when I've woken up, I don't know, maybe an hour before or something like that, it's just so strange and so bizarre to see my face that puffy. I don't know, it's just weird. So what I'm going to try tomorrow is, you know, I have these like silver, not silver, but like a metal um, tools that I have in my freezer that are supposed to to de-puff and drain your face and I've never used them because I never really felt the need for them and I got them maybe I'm not sure maybe two weeks ago now so it's perfect timing um, so what I'm gonna do tomorrow morning is that I'm gonna try them out for the first time and I'll probably film it so that you guys can see as well if it works if there's a difference but it's just so weird I don't know why I get that now anyway so that's one thing I noticed the other thing that I noticed is my skin Basically what happened is that when we went to Paris, I stopped, I have to say, I'm gonna say something that can sound quite gross, but yeah, I didn't take off my makeup for the two nights that we were there. I would just be like so tired after eating and I would just fall asleep and I would be like, oh, you know what, I can't be bothered. I can't be asked to wash my face now to get up and all that. So I would just fall asleep and then the following morning I would wake up and wash my face thoroughly and everything but then of course I would put makeup back on again after for the day and I've been doing that for the two previous nights and I can see and on top of that I haven't used my night skincare which really works for my skin because it's quite um I have like this um liquid exfoliator kind of thing which you just have to like pat on your face and it works really well it's from a French brand called um, Biologique Recherche and what's funny is that I recently just recorded a skincare routine for you guys where I tell you that, every, that my skin is doing amazing, that I don't have a single spot or any like pimples or blemishes or anything like that. And now I've been getting, I have like this big spot right here. I don't know if you can tell because I'm wearing makeup. I can feel that my, my skin isn't the best. And it's just always like that. I don't know if you've noticed or if it happens to you as well, is that when you tell someone about something that's been doing great for you, you know, something happens to whatever, you know, the subject that you're you've been talking about so anyway so yeah so that's the other thing that I wanted to tell you about so I really need to take care of my skin and I probably need a facial so I might do a hydro facial actually there's a place here where I've been to once and the facial was amazing it's called a uh, clinic renaissance it's not far from where I live so I think I'm gonna have to make an appointment and just yeah just get it done again because it was so amazing my skin was just so smooth so clean so deeply cleansed afterwards so I think I'm gonna see if they have any availability soon for an appointment and the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that I've run out of my favorite foundation which is Armani Luminous Silk I think hold on let me get the bottle so it's this one it's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk perfect low flawless foundation and I love this one so much and I've run out and I'm in shade 6.25 I've noticed how my makeup isn't looking that great and how patchy it is and all that stuff so I'm gonna make an order now I'm gonna go on to Sephora I think and just order a new one because this one is amazing it really gives you that flawless skin but without looking like you're wearing foundation what I hate about makeup is when you can see that someone is wearing makeup in the sense that you see more the makeup than their actual face and features and everything. I like when you can still see, you know, my little, I don't know if we can call them imperfections, but I like when things are still looking realistic and natural looking, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna order this foundation. It's not necessarily high coverage, which is what I like, but I'm not sure because at the same time, I really wanna go to uh, the city center and just buy all of these things but then I don't know when I'll have the chance to go there because tomorrow is Saturday and I avoid at all costs I could wait for Monday because even if I order things now it's not going to arrive before beginning of next week anyway so I don't know I'll have a think about it but it's the following morning and this is what I'm going to be using after my shower because like I said yesterday my face really needs it at the moment because because of its puffiness when I wake up they are currently in the freezer but I will take them out um, after my shower and then we will try this together so apparently it's similar to dry brushing 
So basically, it acts like a lymphatic, lymphatic, I'm not sure how you say it, or lymphatic, I don't know, drainage, basically. So where you, you drain your lymph and you really get rid of that puffiness, but it also, you know, stimulates your blood circulation and everything. So we'll try that after I've had my shower. ready for the day. I, I had to put another layer of fake tan because I realized that it wasn't dark enough. However, I've also realized that when I, when you put more of the fake tan that I showed you, which is the Vita Liberata, it's actually quite green. I mean, the undertone is quite green, but that's only the guide color because then when you shower and you rinse it off, then you have, you know, this nice warm color like tan but for now the um, the guide color is quite green i find especially on my legs if i show you here i don't know if the camera will pick it up but it's actually quite green compared to the normal color of my skin let's say so we'll see how it develops and this is my outfit of the day honestly today is saturday and i didn't want to do anything special we're just gonna go to my parents have some coffee and yeah just spend the afternoon there so i didn't want to make a specific effort and uh, especially that I have fake tan on I'd rather just put something comfortable something that I'm not worried about if it becomes stained uh, because of the fake tan and everything so I think I'm gonna wear this jacket which I really like which is from Mango so yeah that's it I hope you like this vlog this very first vlog in English or at least first vlog in a very long time on my channel so I hope that you enjoyed it let me know what you thought of it and let me know if you want to see more of it and uh, yeah I will see you very soon take care and yeah I'll see you soon bye